Hi Floss Tube. I'm Lori and welcome to Once Upon a Stitch. Today is Friday. I think it's the 8th of September. Uh, if you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're one of my amazing subscribers, thank you so much for coming back and visiting with me and being there for me. Um, I don't know if you can tell, I've had to stop this video and restart it a couple of times because you guys brought me to tears and I'm not a pretty crier. <laughs> so, um, but I do want to thank everybody who sent their prayers, good thoughts, good mojos. Um, I appreciate each and every one of you. Some of you have reached out personally. Um, and I also received a lovely card from Bonnie. She asked me for my address and she sent me a thinking of you card. Um, thank you so much, Bonnie. This came at a very needed time. Um, I am going to save all the family updates and news and information to the end. And I'm going to um, move forward as a, my regular floss tube video. And so we're gonna start right from the beginning. Um, oh. So anyway, uh, again, thank you for all the kind words. I totally appreciated each and every one of them. Um, but I did get mixed up um, as I, you know, like I try to keep up with sending thank yous to everybody who uh, sent a, um, a comment, who posted a comment. I try to respond to each and every one of you. If I missed anybody, I truly apologize. Um, um, they don't usually pop up. Every once in a while, it'll pop up that somebody sent a message. And then I go back and I, I hit newest first. So then I scroll to the bottom and I move my way up. So I hope that I always catch everybody. But I did mix up two floss tubers. Um, and they are Joy and Emma K are the Carolina Stitchers. And I, when they sent me um, good prayers and, and good thoughts, I thank them as Kathy, who is the Carolina cross stitcher. So Carolina stitchers and Carolina cross stitchers, I got them mixed up. So I do apologize to Joy and Emma. Um, I've watched your videos, so I know exactly who you are. Um, and if anybody hasn't seen them, they're the Carolina stitchers and um, a lovely mother and daughter. And they do some amazing uh, cross stitching. Um, Let's see, I want to thank Pam and Steph from Just Keep Stitching um, because they gave me a shout out as the gold um, member of Floss Tube. And they did it with, along with the silver mem member, who's um, Heidi, who's Stitching Fay. Now, if anybody doesn't know what gold and silver mean, um, but I'm sure you all do because everybody watches Pam and Steph, um, they started talking about floss tubers who've been around for a couple of years and that's their gold um, floss tuber. And then they start um, talk about new floss tubers as their silver. So I was honored, thrilled that they mentioned me and I was even more honored and thrilled that they mentioned me with Heidi who's stitching Faye because I, I mean, I always comment on her uh, videos that she just gives me so much inspiration. She does some amu amazing um, projects of mirabilias and samplers, and she has so much to share. And if you haven't checked her out, you do have to check. Um, it's Stitching Fay. I'll put everything in the drop down, all the floss tubers that I've mentioned, so that you can um, check them out. But thank you, um, Pam and Steph. Uh, that was so exciting for me. Um, I didn't expect it. <laughs> um, and I also wanted to reach out and say hello to Carla, who somebody said that I was her, oh, I think it was Dina, half stitch, cross stitch, uh, share this with me, that Carla had watched my channel and I was showing Winter in the Village and she was so inspired that she went out got the pattern and she's stitching it as well. Carla, if you're on Instagram, tag me so I can follow your progress along. Um, 
somebody asked, how do I start a project like Opening Gambit because um, by Long Dog, because it's a large project and she was a little bit overwhelmed of how to start it. So I said that I would, I would be showing it. I think I, I stitched on it. I hope I have it here so I don't have to get up and look for it. I think it's in the pile. But if not, I'll talk about it at the end after I show, show all my um, whips. Okay, so I think that's it. Yeah, okay. I had some finishes, which um, I haven't had in a while. I've shown some previous finishes and maybe one or two here and there. But um, my stitching group that we um, usually Zoom on Wednesdays and Saturday nights, I, I don't always make it um, to that anymore um, because usually I'm tired. I had a meet up with Donna, Dina, half stitch, cross stitch, and D. They're the three Ds and I'm the L in the group. <laughs> um, and it was a Thursday night and Thursdays I have uh, Layla, Libby, and Caleb. So after about an hour that I was on or something, I just couldn't stop yawning. I couldn't stitch anymore because my eyes were closing. and. I, when I stitch when I do that, the next day it's usually rip out time. But, um, so anyway, we had a meetup on Saturday uh, on Zoom where we had a finishing day, we called it. And uh, I, think we, I think everybody was getting on at 11. But I had a, an extra hour in the morning and I knew I wasn't gonna be on um, too much in the afternoon, so I, turn my computer on whenever anybody signed on, I was there and we basically finish our own projects, but we finish them together. So if we have a question, oh, what do you think of this? Or what do you think of that? And on, on camera, it shows so much different than when you do it, just look at it in front of you. So, um, so it was a lot of fun and I finished a few things and I just wanna share them with you. This was a previous finish that I stitched and I finally fully finished it. And this is my granddaughter Talia's Christmas ornament this year. So I did all five grandchildren with Prairie Schooler alphabet. Um, the girls are all this in this direction and Caleb's was in this direction. And I put a little bell at the top and a charm in the back with the year. And that was the first one. And then this was, um, this is going to be Gianna's Christmas ornament this year. And I had stitched the whole thing around. No, I left the bottom open, but I stitched it around. I cut it all out. I flipped it and realized I didn't put a ribbon to hang it. <sighs> so we were talking about it in our group. And when they said, oh, if you put a ribbon in the back, you have to maybe put a button so that it doesn't tip this way. So I just thought, uh, so I found some cording. It's the first cording I did on my own. It's not the best cording, but it was long enough. And that's what I used to go around the pillow. And this is a tiny modernist, I think it was tiny modernist, um, mouse decorating for Christmas or mouse decorating Christmas. And um, so what I did was I finished the pillow, I st stuffed it, I stitched up the bottom, I ironed it because I don't like them like puffy. See, there's like just, just enough puff for me. And then I hand stitched, I start at the top center, I hand stitched all this down and then I um, stitched around to tack this hanger down part of it. And then I knotted it and I cut it in the back. So it has a little fringe. And then I put um, a bulb pin with the year and a, a button. And then in the front, I put a wreath to hide the knot basically and a little bell in there as well. And that's, so I have all the Christmas ornaments for this year done. And then I, these two. I had these previously done. I did four of them. And I had come to a stop because I couldn't find the, the roll of ribbon because I was going to do all of them in this. 
ribbon, but I couldn't find them. Couldn't find where I put it, if I used it all, but I, I thought I put it somewhere where I was gonna save it for this. Still haven't found it. So one year I did, I think, I don't know which two I did first. I think I did the house and maybe the fox. And then I did, no, you know what? It had to be these two that I did first because of the ribbon. Those, that was the ribbon I was looking for. So these two were done the first year. These two were done the second year, same um, hanger. And then I had stitched them, but I didn't finish them till now. So now I have the snowman and peace dove. So now I have all six of them. And this is from the Prairie Schooler. It's called um, Evergreen. And I don't think I can hold them all or I can show them all. <laughs> but if um, YouTube gets a picture of this, that would be nice. <laughs> so um, I was finishing them all the same because every years ago, people were buying these uh, huge window um, frames and they were hanging something in each window pane. And I think theirs were nine panes. I found a smaller window pane. Um, oh, I don't know if it was like the first year I did a floss tube and I think I even shared the window pane um, and I never did anything with it because, and this was what I had planned to originally do in the six windows. So I have three ribbons that have the red, three ribbons that have the green. And um, I think I will somehow put them in the window and then um, display it at Christmas time. And if I do do that and not just put them on the Christmas tree because I couldn't get it to work well, um, I will share it with you. Okay, so August in my stitching group, we were given a month each um, to come up with a like a challenge and um, it was Dee's month and she chose a bee theme for August or something with yellow and black so I selected from Primrose Cottage Hive Rules and I had seen on Primrose Cottage's videos that the mom had stitched be sweet like honey and made it a little pillow and she picked one of the bee I think this bee here and put it in the corner and I really thought that was a great idea and I hadn't bought the pattern yet but because I saw it done that way because this is not something that I would normally uh, stitch something like this about bees I like them in little pillows to put around so I might do another section next year and make it another pillow so this was one of the finishes that I did that Saturday. For a second, I'm looking here and it looked like a U. I'm like, what word is that? But it's, there's a space there, like honey. Be sweet like honey. And there's the little bee that I did separately. And the back is like a honeycomb. And what I did this one was I split, slit the back to turn it. And then um, I filled it with polyfill and then I glued on a piece of fabric and from a distance you really can't tell. And I have a nice clean finish on the bottom because with the uh, Rick Rack, and I didn't want to add any more embellishments to it. So that's um, another finish that I had this month. Okay. So with the beam, beam, bee theme, I decided for as a car project because um, Sal and I, when we, we go out, he usually does the driving. And um, I found this little pattern. I believe it was on the freebie table. Let me take this out of here. And it's called Be Happy. And I thought it would be nice to accompany the other one. And I thought I would finish it as a little pillow so I'm stitching this on a 14 count um, Ada of Country Mocha. And I, I kept this in because I wanted to show you the difference. See how white and sh that is? And how like, not as, 
I don't know what's the word I'm looking for. It doesn't show as well as the white here. I stitched this on both sides, but hated it because I did not like my stitches on. And, oh, this is 18 count, that's why. I was doing two threads over one on 18 counts, and I felt that it was, like, I don't like these stitches. They're ugly, basically. <laughs> so I did both sides and I wasn't happy, so I pulled out this one side and I redid it with one strand. And I figured that, okay, it's not as, not outstanding. I don't know what the word I'm looking for right now, but it doesn't show up as well as this one does. But sometimes a bee's wings are not as uh, visible as the rest of it. <laughs> anyway, I, I left this, I'm going to um, take this one out and I'm going to restitch it with one strand. And then all I have are um, two flowers to, to be put in. But this is just a, um, a car project. So it took me, a, we went to New York to visit my in-laws, um, <clears throat> which is about an hour and 15 minutes away. And um, it took me at least half the time to, to rip this out for some reason in the car. But, uh, and then I started putting it back in. So I still have to rip that out and then restitch it. So I don't know exactly when I'll pick it up, but some car ride. So I wanted to share that with you. So from now on, I think when I, I do um, 18 count, I might, and that has a lot of white, especially. I find the white doesn't, um, I mean, we always complained about white stitches not laying properly, even with, because it's so tight in an 18, me personally, that um, I think I might look into then just using one strand. Or maybe I'll try sulky, but I don't know if I have white and sulky. I'll, uh, whatever, I'll figure it out. Okay, so what have I been stitching? <laughs> I said, I don't know if I have my long dog. <laughs> I have it. It's the first one that I worked on. Okay, so <clears throat> I came to the part where here's Long Dog um, opening Gambit, and I'm I have the last page to do, and first it's twenty, and then the year, and then there's two initials. So I asked Michael because this is for Michael. I said, "What?" <sighs> Whose initials do you want me to put in there? And he said, let me think about it. I said, okay, think about it. And then he came back to me and he said, I want you to put R and M, Rebecca and Mike. So I said, okay. And I had to chart it. Now, Long Dog gives you an alphabet with the pattern and an R, I would chart as the R and it fits under there. There's a crown, I don't know if you can see it here, but there's a crown and then the letters underneath. So the R fit, but the M is way too wide. There's not enough black to contain it in that section. So I have to rechart it. So uh, that's where I left off. Now, somebody said to me, one of the questions was, how do I start on this? Well, let's look at what I stitched first. Okay, here's that corner. I'm trying to see where the page starts. It starts at the head of the, and the head of the horse. Let's see. The rook, the knight. Been a while since I played chess. The horse. <laughs> this is the top of the page where it starts. And it um, went, let me just get closer. It went down this way. So I stitched this and I put the R in. And then I stopped and I have to um, chart the M and then work my way down. So how did I start this piece? Well, I started at the top. I am a 
if I you look at the project, I'm a top left hand start 98% of the time. So what I did was I just started here at the top border and I get to a point where I get tired of doing the top border and I have and a little bit down and I have something to count off of to do the motifs. And so that's what I always, I always look for the previous stitches to count off and it's a way of checking. Now, I would never, let's say, stitch this section and then go all the way here, stitch this section and try to meet it in the middle. I think that's looking <laughs> for trouble. I think in working in one direction, um, you'll have better peace of mind that it will work out. And I always look for, like I said, either the border and count off of that. And then as I get down, as I'm stitching the house, I make sure that this motif is in the right place because this is something I would not want to fudge. I mean, if something is off, I actually um, pull it out and do it again. So this is the whole piece. So I have that one last page left to do, and this will definitely be a finish this year because this is something I stitch on every month. I put in two days a month. And if you're new, that's my rotation when I um, stitch on any project. I usually give it a two day rotation. There's times that I do less, but I, I allot it for two days and if for whatever reason I don't stitch on that day, sometimes I move on to the next project. Okay, so the next project I picked up is Oh Holy Night Nativity by Stony Creek. And this is stitched on a 25 count Niagara Blue Lugana. And it's a big piece. Um, and 25 count, two threads over two. Oh, I have to open it. I'm so sorry. I hope it's a large piece of fabric. And I stitched on the next. Shepherd. I finished outlining the blue, I think. I think that's what you saw last. And the sheep. So I put the last of the sheep leg in, his shoes, and I put in all this color. So I, you know, little by little, it's hard stitching the light colors. Um, even though it's on in this like bluish. This was to count because I, like I say, I stop and start at the top left hand corner. So every 10 stitches I did a cross so that I can count them because I, it came down to here so that I had this to count off of to how to start this. And that was my um, starting on something like uh, Stony Creek. So came down this side so that I had something to count off of. Um, I guess what, like over here, I, ha I know I had enough room. I didn't realize how much out, further out this stood in. So, I mean, I do have enough room for framing, but it's a little bit closer than I would have liked. Okay. This is what the piece, if you're new to my channel, my husband said, oh, you'll have that done in six months. I says, try six years. Okay, what did I do next? Oh, okay. Needlework press. In all things, be exceedingly diligent. It's just a working copy that I have in here. Oh, and then when I do do big, large projects like Long Dog, my hair keeps tickling me. I'm trying to grow out my bangs. Um, I usually enlarge it on a larger sheet of paper and I highlight what I've stitched, especially on long dog. So I know how many lines, 
um, to stitch what the stitch count is. Okay, back to in all things be exceedingly diligent. I completed this motif, these motifs, this and that, and I finished the project. Ta da! Now, um, this linen, oh, linen, no, this is 28 count um, even weave. It's vanilla swirl Lugana. The section here is a little bit wider than the section here because the piece was not cut properly. Um, and I always st start to the closest to the corner that I can work because I'm always afraid I'm not going to have enough, even though it measures properly. It's just my thing, I guess. So I have this one done and be nice, which is the accompanying piece of this. So one day when I find two frames in the in the thrift store that are identical that I can my husband can cut down for me, I will um, frame them. Okay, this is something I have not picked up in a while. And that is Heartstring Samplery, His Eyes on the Sparrow. If you've been following me, you know that um, I cut it short. I am not stitching all this. I find it very difficult to read the symbols on the pattern. And I've, I, that's it. I, you know, I just didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would. So, um... I worked on the flowers. So I'm choosing motifs that I want to include. Um, so I stitched this whole flower and this piece down here. And then I moved the Q-snap here and I did a, a little bit of the flower here. And that's it. I have to fill in the leaves yet and then work my way across. And I'm going to see if these, these birds um, fit in. I have to count the space stitches and, and see if they fit in like in here. And then I'll match it on this side. And then, I don't know, I'll choose some urn of flowers or something in, to fill in the rest haven't decided totally what's going to be in here, but as you can see, it's a very large piece. It's 28 count Heritage Lugana. I love the fabric. Um, but instead of just making it an unfinished project, I'm just going to select the motifs that I would like to put in there and do the flower border and call it a day. I don't want to give it up because there's a lot of work that went into that and I was excited in the beginning. So I will see how far I get and whatever I stitch and whenever I do, I will most definitely share it with you. I have a lot of projects because we haven't been together as often as I would have liked. The next one is Kringles. And on my Whipgo board, my goal this year was to stitch this row and the name Kringles and be done with it until next year. Well, Dina, my friend Dina, who's half stitch cross stitch and who I'm sure you all watch, she started this in December and finished it. Let me tell you, she finished it. I'm sure you know that too. But um, she was my inspiration to maybe keep going on Kringles to see um, if I can get it done by the end of the year. Maybe, maybe not. But I did put more um, stitching in it. The last time you saw it, I had completed the center section um, minus the wick on the candles. There's two little uh, candles in there. I didn't put that in yet. Um, but then I started all the outlining stitching for this room and the little lace doily down at the bottom with some sweets on it. And, and that's where I am in this room. 
Then I have that room. So will I finish it by the end of the year? Maybe. But that's my Kringles. And this is stitched on 28 count say, uh, Springfield Sage Lugana. Okay. Dina's is not only finished, it's framed. Then I picked up let's see where there's a picture of it. This was a pattern sent to me by Blushing Pink Stitches, who is on YouTube and on has an Etsy store. And she's on Instagram too. She does um hades and full coverage pieces. And she sent me this pattern that she decide designs called Hello Spring and asked me if I'd like it. And I said, I'd love to um, stitch it. So um, this was something that I was used to bring to the library with me when I was able to go to the libraries on Tuesdays. But um, I haven't been there in quite a while because now Tuesdays is a babysitting day. Um, but that's okay. I chat with them and see them occasionally. Uh, this is spring. I don't know if I'm gonna put in hello in. I think I'm just gonna leave it as spring. I have to finish outlining this last letter and then I will be finished with it and I'm going to make it a pillow. And I think I'm gonna see about what kind of um, chenille maybe that I'll put around it to accent one of the colors. And so I have these little chicks to outline and the letter itself, but everything else is stitched and outlined. And it was pretty, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the stitch. So thank you, Lindsay, for sharing that with me. And one more um, rotation and that'll be done. Okay. I have a, a a bag here that has all my pieces to share with you and I don't I didn't realize how long it's been since we've been together the next one I picked out was Lori Holt's flea market flowers and my goal was to complete six flowers this year and I finally I finally did it Let's see which way does this go No. Oh, it goes this way. Right? Yes. It goes in this direction. Okay. So I finished six of the flowers and I start, what is that? Oh, that's part of a flower. I started, I guess the outlining here and then I just came down. And then when I, when my eyes give out, I just stop. So will I pick it up this year? I hope to pick it up maybe one more time at least. And, and then maybe push for a finish for next year. This is something I haven't pulled out in a long time as well. And that is Plum Street, Liberty's Welcome. That's what it looks like. And I worked on the roof of that house. And I'm trying to decide um, what color I'm going to do the house. I think it's a very light gray. So as long as it shows up on my fabric when I'm stitching it, I will keep it. Otherwise I will swap it out. 
And this is stitched on a 28 count Lugana heritage as well, heritage. And I'm having such a hard time with these large projects today. That's what I worked on, the roof. So I had two more windows. I, was, I, I thought I made some really decent progress because that's really dense stitching. And this is, this is how wide the piece will be. And then there'll be the same border down this side. And so when I pick this up again, I will continue on the house. one big piece of fabric and I didn't get to the bottom yet so I don't know how long, much longer that'll be but I know a lot of people stitch it on 40 count and it's going to be easier to frame and but but I can't see 40 count so I have to stitch on what I like and stitch what I can see okay it's almost like a whip parade the next one was by the Bay, Mountain View Bay. It's my own camera. And I think I worked on it for two days. Oh, this house. This house was a beast, but it came out pretty. I'm stitching this on. Hmm. I don't know. Is there a piece of paper that tells me? Yes, it's called Sudden Storm. It's a 28 count Lugana. So I stitched. Oh, let's see if I can do it this way. I'm out of practice, as you can tell. This house, the water, the grass, and this here. But that house was like difficult. I think it's three colors. Difficult in that you had to pay attention really carefully. So um, that's where I'm at. I always liked um, by the bay pattern, like in the sense of that I saw people working on them. And I thought they were really nice. And I know a lot of people, they do it in, in parts. Um, like they might have nine parts going in this direction or they might have them long way and they're beautiful. I really do enjoy seeing them. Um, I don't know if I would tackle something that large again, but I do love seeing them. Oh, this was not much stitching. I think this was one day. And this is Under the Friendship Tree by Mirabilia. And I just did a little bit more of the border. I didn't even finish the border. That's how tired I was that night. Um, I have my little st string here, st back stitch, so that I know which way is up. I brought the border down this side and I brought the bottom up across a little bit. So I basically have to just go down and across, and but I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. It's, um, it's like a lilac and a brown border. I'm looking forward to getting into the meat of the um, pattern. Like Next, I'll probably fill in this. And then maybe go down to what color the border is here and then work off of that because this section here is just the outlining of the tree, so. November, they do, um, some people, not all people, some people do, is it Nora November? Like old Nora Corbett's, where I might do like the ones I've started um, of Mirabilia or Nora Corbett. Did I show this? Yes, I did. Um, and maybe stitch up in November in a two-day rotation on that. Okay. I hope my voice isn't getting too low that you don't hear me. Because I know sometimes when I'm watching a floss tuber and you're talking, all of a sudden your voice goes lower, it's hard to hear what they're saying clearly. So I try to be conscious of that. 
The next one is a Plum Street, Always Remember. I started this on 9-11 last year. I was hoping to have it done this year, but it's not going to be done. I didn't realize how big this house was. Um, the la And there's two colors. I, you can see like the stars are in a darker shade of that color. And I sh last video, I shared that, what was the name of it? Tennessee clay, I think, red clay. I had three different skeins of it, three different colors of it. And I had selected like a light one and I stitched it in. I showed it in my last video and that stood out to me like a sore thumb that I pulled that out <laughs> right away. And then I had to restitch it and I picked a better color to blend in. So I just worked on the house. Oh, I got all the stars done. So let's see if I can remember it. Right in here, I had a big blob of this really, really light colored um, floss and it just stood out too, too much um, that it didn't blend well. So I unpicked, I took it all out and restitched it because some, because they're variegated, some of them match so closely to each other. So I just took it out. This, this is stitched in the beige door. So basically I have fill in of this and the house will be done. And then, um, I come down and do some more flowers. There's another eagle, the poppies and grass. So I, I do enjoy this project very much. And I'm glad, I'm glad I'm at the point where if I see something that I don't like, I have a little bit of experience under me now that I'm willing to swap out a color. Because usually I select the wrong colors when I do that. Because I like colorful, and so sometimes I pick too bright of a shade. But you know what? So I pick it out and do it again. I have to learn that, that it's okay to pick something and not like it and then swap it out again. The next one I worked on is the uh, Bygone Stitches Christmas Quaker 2. And this is basically two colors. It calls for Current and Blue Spruce. And it, they are both Gentle Arts threads. I did buy the uh, Blue Spruce, but um, in the Current, I selected a anchor thread that's 20, zero, 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 two, zero for my um, red in there. And since we've been together, I got this motif done and the words, we wish you, I believe the tree was there. So it's this motif and the words. And I, so I stitched across the top, which I had already and now I'm filling in. I fill in. I'll fill in the pages of the top rows, make sure that they're all filled before I go down to the next section. It's really, I, I'm enjoying this. I don't stitch on it as much as I like to, but I do enjoy stitching on it. I guess maybe because the big projects, I'm like, oh, hmm, it's not gonna be a finish soon. <laughs> Okay, just a few more. Okay, September started by now, and I'm participating in what they call ABC Cinco. It's the Magazine Monthly Challenge Group. And what they do for September is they pull the alphabet. Now, there's 26 out letters in an alphabet, and the bingo board has 25 spaces. So they just take out a random letter. This year they took out the letter T. Um, so you assign, like for every letter of the alphabet, you just assign, assign a project. Sometimes it's easy, like A, I put in Always Remember by Plum Street. So it's easy to figure out what A stood for. And then some things like today's stitch is going to be Y. And I'm stitching the Red House sampler. And you're saying, well, Lori, that doesn't have a Y in it. So, or start the word with it. So I said, it's 
going to count towards the U's, Y-E-W-S, the type of fern trees that are in the project, that I'm saying are in the project. Um, so, so these next ones, oh, so you only stitch on it one day unless they call it, they should happen to call it the next day, which is very rare. I, I last year, last year, January, when they did ABC Bringo, they, oh no, it wasn't ABC, it was Bringo for Burr, Bringo, Ingo. Anyway, um, they, uh, what did they do for that? Oh, they gave you prompts and you had to meet the prompts. So this time it's letters and you have to make it work with the letters. And I forgot what I was going to say about it all. But. So anyway, oh, the, we didn't stitch two, like if I had a project for two days, like I would put something in two times on the, on the um, board so that I get my two day rotation in. Okay. So it's not in a row, but, um, but at least I get some time on it. Anyway. The next one I picked up is, now this doesn't have a name on the front cover. That's one of the things with the Brenda Keys patterns. It, this is the New England sampler. And sometimes reading, like I get them mixed up, the, the New England, the um, Plant Wisdom. So this is the New England sampler. And so far I just put the one day in. Let's see, what did I stitch? Uh, I brought down the border. That's what I did. Oh, I, that's right. Now I know. I did the rest of the alphabet. Up to V was done. So I did W, X, Y, Z. I brought down the border. I did the tree and the bird. And I love this pattern. Love, love, love it. And this is where it's at. So the next time I pick this up, I will start here and start working this way. Isn't that adorable? Oh, that mermaid. Look how cute. Anyway, I love this pattern. I love the way the, and this is all DMC. And this is stitched on a 28 count Lugana called Golden Tan. Two threads over two. Next was a new start. And I had wanted to start this earlier in the year and I just couldn't fit it in. But um, they call the letter D. So this is Spring Doxology by Rabbit Valley Studio. And that's the pattern. And I'm doing this on a 14 count Ada because I wanted something easy on my eyes and in my brain. Um, so um, one day, I don't remember what day, it was called D for Spring Doxology. And the next day it was called, they called the, the letters at night, anywhere between seven and nine usually because she lives in the West Coast. So that's when she posts it. So that's when I get it. And then I find out what the next day's letter is. And I come to find out that the next day was B. So I put this in for B as well. And it was for the bird in the picture. So this is where I've gotten on spring doxology. And it's, of course you can read it. It's Praise God from whom all blessings flow. And so I stitched that in the two days. So basically what I have left is another bird, a flower, the rabbit, and that's it. Yeah, and these are supposed to be two little bees. So I should be able to f finish it in, an, in another rotation. And hopefully by, I was gonna say by Easter because it's, I don't know why it's a bunny. It doesn't say I have anything to do with Easter, but I did change some colors though. Now that I found a little, but I started to do is write notes to myself because, because of things like, his eye is on the sparrow sometimes. I don't pick that up very often. And I put it on my Wipco board, forcing me to pick it up. So, but then I, if I change a color and I don't pick it up right away, I'm not gonna remember. So I decided to 
um, change some of these colors. And what I changed so far was the flower. This flower, I chose a darker color because it was called for what's in his ears. And you couldn't see it on this fabric. I mean, this you see because it's surrounded by a darker color. Like there's some er, of this color in this flower here that's really difficult to see. So that's why I changed that color. And I changed the words. Um, I didn't have the call for classic color works. What did it call for? Sugared violets. And so I just selected one of the two they su suggest. They suggested a strand of one, 3041 and 3042. I took the darker of the colors and that's what I stitched it on, stitched it with. And this is just a piece of beige um, beta. My notes. Okay. And finally, last night's stitch was the um, Brenda Keys, the sampler company, the Wisdom Sampler. This was two days. It was called earlier in the month as well. So I had up to this house done. So I worked on this house and I just started that one. And this last night, I yesterday I had all three children. So um, last night was not a good stitching night, only two hours. And then, and then lights out. But I completed one house minus the sidewalk. So I completed that orange rust house. And then I started the roof on the next house, which I believe is the widest house on the street. So this is where I'm at. So pretty, I love this. And this is a 20, 28 count Lugana in ivory. So pretty. Uh, two strands over two. I usually stitch two over two, uh, except when I showed you that bead project. And those are all the stitching projects that I have. Oh, that was a lot. Okay. So, my whip go board. I'm not doing well. I'm not doing well because the ones that I've completed haven't been called. And the ones that aren't completed, I'm oh, the ones that have been called, I'm so way far behind. So I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna get a full board this year, but that's okay. Live and learn. Do not put hours down. Um, just put it down and work on it that month. <laughs> anyway, um, but I did get to the sampler house, the Scottish house sampler. Oh no, that, that's not it. Let's see, what did I, oh, I, I was able to color in the six flowers on flea market flowers. And I thought there was something else I was able to. Nope, that's it. That's it. So I didn't, I'm not doing very well, but I'm close. Like for instance, on the New England sampler, I think I have two hours left to stitch to make the 36 hours. And then the Mirabilia, not the Mirabilia, the a mini Chatelaine, um, Mir, mini Mandela Chatelaine. It's at 24 hours. It was cold in August. I haven't stitched it, anything yet on it. I just don't like the pattern in that it shows you one quadrant and then you have to. So what I did was I made photocopies and I glue, pasted it all together so that I can look at it one big project hoping that will help. Okay, so the August acrostic for 24 hours of cross stitch was spot, oh, spontaneous. <laughs> it's hard to read this way. So that was, I accomplished that. And then for the magazine monthly challenge, it was roots, I accomplished that. 
So for September, the 24 hour acrostic is on the spot. I think that's what I was looking for. I was reading it separately. Um, and I've stitched two of the projects on that so far. And somebody asks about these. And for the most part, like the is for T, the New England sampler. But then like for Kringles, I have N down for Little House Needleworks. And then I have Kringles on here twice. What am I crazy? Oh, it's only an hour. Okay, well, I happened to put it down here, not realizing I put it on twice. Um, I put it for the O and I'm saying that there's chandeliers on the bottom and those lights are on. So, you know, you have, to, you can play with your words as well. Now, when you put it in for two spots, you have to make sure that you complete the goal. Now, because I knew of ABC Cinco was happening this month, I put the goal of one hour this, this month. Usually I put in three. I try to get three hours in a day. But like you saw, like I mentioned last, last night, I only stitched for two hours. So I wouldn't have um, been able to do that. I wouldn't have been, met the goal unless I put in more hours. So this is what this single ABC Cinco board go, looks like. These are the letters that have been called. I started putting the date in and then I started um, filling in the square and the ink bled. So I stopped doing the date there. Didn't make a difference to me when they were called. As long as I have the right letters and that's my board so far. And then they give you a, um, a page like this with the alphabet and you can put in. And this, when you're, when you join the group, um, th these are all available for you to download if you'd like to download. So, um, so I downloaded the pages, I fill them in. My thing is I love planning and replanning when they don't work out. And they also did an acrostic for um, the month of September and that's the word cactus. And so far I've stitched on three of the projects. And on this group, you could double dip, meaning like if you're doing ABC Cinco and you worked on it, you can check it off as well on this. Some groups you cannot, unless you stitch double. Like I said, if, you, if you're stitching, if you're counting stitches and you need to stitch, let's say a hundred stitches, then if you put it in twice, you have to stitch 200 stitches. So now that I've confused everybody, uh, let me get back to the fun stuff. Okay, we're gonna do a giveaway. Um, don't say giveaway in your, in your mess. Oh, that's what I wanted to say. I got a message from video 127 and it was from a person and they were saying like, I'm not gonna watch another person who uses the word acrostic in their, talk about it. Like if you talk about an acrostic, I'm not watching you anymore. And I thought that was very strange because a lot of people talk, say the word, and they go, do you even know what it means? So naturally I went to look up the, the um, definition of it to see like, is it a bad word? <laughs> But no, it, it, it said it was a poem. It could be a poem or a word challenge. Like we're using it. You get a letter word and then you make something work with it. A letter, not a word. You get a letter and you make something, words work with it. So that was very weird. So I was going to like call that person out. and like, well, you know, like there's other people. Don't watch me if you, you know, if that's how you feel. But so I looked again this morning and I went back to that video. And another person just had the same exact thing written, but then they had numbers after their names. So now I'm thinking there's spammers out there. So I'm gonna do this giveaway and I am not going to, like in the next video, I will call the name out of who won through a random number generator. And I will announce it on my video, but I'm not gonna mention it on your post because I don't want people to then go to other people and say, you won this giveaway. Um, I will not do that. In order to check to see if you really won something, I will I will mention it in my video. That's the only way I will um, tell you that you've won. It's the only way to keep the spammers out, I guess. Okay, so I was trying to think of what would be a fun question. <laughs> this is gonna show you my age, but 
whatever. When I was young, young, I'm not gonna say younger, young, we would, I lived, I grew up in the Bronx, New York, and oh, about, I don't know, a block and a half from my house was the trains, and we had the elevated trains. And that was, and the street underneath it was called Westchester Avenue. And that's where all the stores were. And then off the, these streets were a build, buildings, small buildings, large buildings. And people, we lived in these, these houses. I lived in a four family house, two, fam, two families upstairs, two families downstairs, only four rooms, two bedrooms, a living room and a kitchen. And of course the bathroom, but they say they never count the bathroom. And that was our house. That's what I grew up in. Um, so anyway, the avenue, Westchester Avenue, is where all the little stores were and pizza store, pizza joints and the movie theater. It was called the Ward Theater. It was on Ward Avenue and Westchester. Anyway, so what I remember is pizza used to cost 15 cents and you got a soda for 10 cents. And for a quarter, you had lunch. <laughs> That's what I, and, and it's funny because this past weekend we went to visit my mother-in-law because a, Sal's cousin who introduced us was going to be there. And she and her husband are moving down to Florida permanently. And this was like the last chance we would see her before she moved, whether she would come up or we would go down, who knows? Who knows what the future holds, but um, she was going to be there and we said that we would drive out. So, um, I asked her, I said, do you remember like going down Westchester Avenue and pizza and how much it cost? And so I wanted to make sure we were on the same page. And then I remember when pizza went to 25 cents. Well, I was like, how can that be? How can they charge for 25 cents for a slice of pizza? So the question that you'll answer is what you remember the cost of pizza being when you were, when you were younger, young, however it fits, um, for a slice. That's what I remember. Okay. The first one, and just put down the number, don't say giveaway in your, um, project because I, in your response, because I will delete the, the, um, response. Okay, the first one is a Brenda Gervais and it's called Tied with Heartstrings. Yes, and this is number one. We'll just put the number if you're interested. Number two is a Little House Needleworks and it's called Quilt Time Sampler. Now, they show this in a clock. I opened the pattern to look at it. Um, my friend, Alza um, gave me this pattern and she marked, she marked the uh, threads. That's the only place if she, if the pattern was hers, that's the only place she marks is her threads. Otherwise I wouldn't, you know, if she marked the pattern, I would not um, put it up, put it up for adoption, put it up for a giveaway. Um, this is an actual clock. This, so you're not stitching this, you're stitching this section. And it's a house, a tree, and some of the things that it says is A, then they have the letter B for bear paws, then C is churn dash for the C and the D. So it, it's like words and letters of the alphabet under a row of quilts under a tree with the house, another quilt, and some baskets and some flowers on the bottom. So that's the pattern. And that's number two. Number three is Stacy Nash, and it's called Sleigh Bells, Pin Keep, and Ornament. And a new pattern. And this is what it looks like. It's hard to see, but it's a, it's a sleigh that's gold. I mean, of course, you can make it any color you want with the reindeer. And number four, is again she just ticked off the colors and she wrote that she needed a, a photocopy so that she can mark it off 
but um, the pattern's in great shape. It's a colored chart. Once I saw the chart, I, I was thinking about stitching it, but I was like, okay, Lori, we gotta not keep everything. This is number four. It's called Christmas Sampler by Cottage Garden Samplings. And I checked this out, because to me, this looked like satin stitches, but it's not. It's all cross stitching. But I think it's because of the color that it is. It, it's probably a um, variegated. So that's why it has the shading in there. That makes it, to me, it makes it look like um, a satin stitch. And again, these are letters and words. I think every letter has a word attached. Angel, Bethlehem, Carol, December, Elves. It's hard to read, so I, I read some of them to you. And then it has some little motifs. And that's number four. Okay, so you know what the question is. You know what to do. Don't say give away. Be 18 years of age or older so that I can request your address. And um, I did not shop, really, but I did get my uh, monthly package from the Fat Quarter Shop. And this is called Cascade Petite. Oh, Cascade by Moda from the Fat Quarter Shop. And beautiful blues. I'm collecting these. <laughs> Eventually I will start quilting again. Okay. Life update. Well, since we were together, we celebrated Gianna's second birthday. She's my second grandchild. She's two years old, second. And um, this was her two-year-old picture. Now, I'm going to put in the drop-down box, besides the floss tubers and stitching information that I usually post, I'm gonna share um, an Instagram and Facebook of Amy, and Michael, uh, two different families. Amy posts a lot with two of my grandchildren. This is Gianna and this is her sister, Talia. And Talia is, let's see, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. Gonna be seven months. That's right, she just started uh, solids. And I watch her on Mondays and Tuesdays. And I'll put Amy's um, Instagram page down below. She posts a lot of the, of the girls and some of them are hysterical. And Gianna got her first haircut and you know how first haircuts go where they cried and then they got her attention and then she had, it was a two lollipop haircut. So it was cute. Um, and so we set, we had a party for Gianna, we had it here and um, unfortunately, Mike and Rebecca and the family couldn't come. Um, Libby was too soon out of the hospital and didn't want to be around too many people right away. So, okay, so that's Gianna and Talia. And my update on Libby. Uh, I'm not saying anything that, I, that hasn't been put out there. Um, Michael and Rebecca put out posts about Libby. Oops. Um, she is diagnosed with Menkes. And I'm not going to talk too much about the um, disease. There was a mutation in one of the genes when the egg split. And so Michael posted about it on Facebook and on Instagram. But if you go to Instagram, you'll see all his posts and you'll see the girls, um, they, do, they did a monthly picture, grouping of pictures of where they were when they were two months old, three months old, every month from the first one to nine. And then he posted a, a collage of talking about Libby and I'll just share real quick. This is my darling Libby. Oh, skipped one. It... 
I mean, you probably can see it better on Instagram or on Facebook. You know, it's just showing it really large. This is in her car seat. Oh, come on. Oh. It's Caleb, Layla, Libby. Let's see which way does it go? That's her car seat one. Did I? Sh Layla and Libby. This is her when she was in the hospital. And that's her when in the hospital. And this is when they were heading out to Ohio. It's her feeding tube. So she was diagnosed with Menkes. The ge genetic doctor here in New Jersey said there's a trial out in Ohio at the children's hospital out there where this doctor um, got funds to uh, tr to try something to help these children. There's no cure for Menkes. Um, the cure, not, not the cure, the, di no, not the diagnosis. What they do is they give her copper because Menkes is a copper deficiency. And copper has a lot to do with a lot of parts of our bodies. Most people, when I mention it, they don't know. They never heard of it. We never heard of it either. Um, I went to my cardio cardiologist for just a regular uh, checkup. And she asked me how my summer was going. So I, I mentioned it. She goes, I never heard of Menkes. She wrote it down. She was going to you know, look into it. So... Um, they, if you read about it, it says, you know, you have to catch it within the 20, 28 days of birth. How do you catch it at 28 days of birth when nobody's taking you seriously when you're saying there's something here? They attribute it to being a couple of weeks premature because they're twins and, you know, they'll catch up. No, there's no cure. So they don't normally test for it. So finally they went to the genetics doctor. They did one set of tests and didn't find anything. She was carrier for certain things, but nothing that came up. So then they did um, a saliva swab and that was gonna take longer to come back. And when she was in the hospital, cause she wasn't developing like Layla, but she wasn't drinking enough either. It was a struggle to get her to eat. Um, it was decided that she would be given a feeding tube. So they put temporarily in through her nose, but then they permanently gave her an operation to put it into her stomach. So we all had to learn how to hook her up to her feeding pump, um, the whole, the whole nine yards. And so she was in the hospital and on August 6th, they found out about, through a, I think the patient portal, they put the results of testing. And that's when I found out um, that she could possibly have this. But then finally, they saw the genetics doctor and it was diagnosed that it is Menkes. Uh, very rare in girls, but it happened and so they went they were told about this doctor he they spoke on the phone he wanted her as part of the trials especially since she didn't have seizures they say a lot of children that have this also have seizures and Libby didn't have any and still hasn't had any so he wanted to see them like within two weeks so Michael and Rebecca drove out there I had Layla, Rebecca's mom had Caleb, and they went out. They left the day early because uh, it was an, over an eight hour drive. They stayed midway and they had to, you know, they have to feed, you have to feed Libby every three hours. So, and it takes an hour to feed. So if she eats at eight, nine o'clock, she's finished. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 11 o'clock, eight o'clock. 12 o'clock, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 
I don't know. <laughs> I, I lost track. But every three hours you have to feed her, and every and it takes an hour, so two hours between, and then feed again. So, um, so they stopped at a rest stop to do that, and then they stopped at a hotel, spent the night. And the next day they went on, stopped midway, fed her, and then then made it to the hospital. And there was a team of doctors um, that are working on this project. And the treatment, right, that's the word, treatment right now is to give her copper twice a day through injections, once in the morning and once at night, and then see how she reacts to it. And two injections for the up to one years old, and then after that, it's one a day. I think they say they have to monitor her kidneys. I don't think it was the liver, but I think it was the, one of the two um, because copper affects it in a not good way. So that's what they're doing right now. But when, while she was in the hospital, I don't know if I shared this in the last video, while she was in the hospital, they took an x-ray and they found that she had, her leg was out of her hip socket, but that she wasn't in pain. I don't understand that happened. But, um, so they had, oh, and they couldn't, they can't deal with other things while you're in the hospital. Even though they find out that something's wrong, because you weren't in for that, they didn't, they couldn't do anything about it. So they had, a, once they were released, they contacted, or, or maybe from there, they made the appointment with an orthopedic, uh, pediatric doctor. And the first doctor they went to, he said to them, he wasn't from, I guess they, Michael told him or Rebecca that about the diagnosis of Menkes and he was not aware of it, but he read up on it like a few minutes before their appointment. And he said that, oh, this is terrible. But he said that you don't know how long she's going to live and why put her through the, the pain of the operation. And I mean, it was all negative. So when I asked, texted Michael that evening and saying, how did you make out? And he says, I'll fill you in tomorrow. I knew that was not a good sign. Um, tomorrow he was bringing the, the children over for us to watch. So he drops them off in the morning. So he was gonna fill us in. And that's what he told us. So he already, he had met a family. He and Rebecca met a family in um, Ohio whose son was having treatments there. And they had a similar incident where his um, hip was out of the hip socket. But he wasn't diagnosed with Mankey's until he was two, and I think he would, they said he was five. Um, so he was older when he had the operation for his hip. Since Libby's only nine months old, anyway, they got the name of the doctor, called him up, went to see them, and the doctor suggested having the operation because you don't know how long she's going to live. And if you don't do anything, arthritis could set in and she could be in more pain than having something done. So he wants to wait until she's a year old. So I guess maybe up for the growth spurt or something, I don't know. But so that's in November. So sometime I, think November they might schedule the surgery. Um, they'll keep her in definitely overnight, but they'll see what her pain tolerance is after that, I believe they said, and before they send her home. So it's not a long stay in the hospital, um, which is good because sometimes you go to the hospital and you pick up germs and come out with other stuff. So I'm glad it's not a long stay. And that's basically it where we are right now. Um, they're doing the treatment. They're gonna do everything they possibly can to help this child. Um, and we're there to support them. You know, people ask, how are Mike and Rebecca doing? I said, it's amazing, amazing. Um, I just think about it and I just lose it. And But they're holding up, but eventually I think they're going to need counseling. Okay. Thank you for visiting with me. 
I was supposed to have a meet up tomorrow at, um, we were gonna meet at Wegmans. Uh, my stitching group that used to meet up at Needleworkers um, once a month. We haven't seen each other since our retreat in July. And we were, Arlene Cohen, who's part of the group and is also works by ABC, she went to Wegmans in Woodbridge, New Jersey, and she asked them, you know, if it's okay, because they have an upstairs. By where their prepared foods are, there's an upstairs where you can eat there. And we've, we've done that before. We've, when they used, especially when they used to have the full prepared foods bar, you'd make a nice big dish and you go upstairs and you sit by the balcony there and you watch these people shop and you're eating and it was lovely. But then COVID happens and things just change. There's not the extensive food bar that there used to be there, but there's food that you can buy and desserts and beverages. So, and I don't think upstairs is used quite as much. So Arlene asked if, you know, we can sit up there and they said, well, you know, buy something, coffee, whatever. Um, yeah, that's fine. So we were gonna do that. They are going to do that tomorrow. Um, I just got a message right before I turned on the video today. Um, Michael has a photo shoot. Michael is a photographer on the side. Um, he sh has done weddings and yearly baby pictures and just a whole bunch of things. I mean, if you go to his Instagram page, besides seeing the children, you'll see um, he got an amazing photograph of the moon when a plane happened to be crossing in front of it. And he took some pictures of some finches in, um, in some, what are those flowers? Sunflowers. Um, some finches together. And I remember talking to him on the phone. I'm hearing the camera clicking. I'm like, how close are you? Because he, they're really close. But he has, he has the lenses that I guess can bring it in really close. So, um, so there's a, a lot of uh, really nice photos that he posts. So anyway, he has a photo shoot tomorrow and he asked me if I would help Rebecca. And I know she's not feeling well. So of course, of course I'll go there. Um, Sal was planning to go over to James's anyway um, to help him with a play set that he put together mostly himself, but there's a few pieces that require four, two sets of hands besides the two that he has. So Sal was gonna go over in there and help him do some stuff around the house. But, so he's gonna go there. I'll go to Rebecca's and um, yeah. So that'll be my Saturday. And then Monday it starts all over again with the children. So I'm gonna say I hope to be back in two weeks, but we'll see. I'm not gonna make promises that it'll be definitely two weeks, but I, I do intend to come back, share with you my progress. Hopefully I'll have a few more finishes. Um, I think, I think Sunday, I said to Sal, do you have plans for Sunday? And he's like, no, I'm not really supposed to rain. I said, maybe we can cut some frames. We, oui. he can cut some frames and I will could do some lacing, but we'll see. We'll see what the day brings and what life brings. And we deal with it on a daily basis. Um, that's it. Okay. I just don't want to say goodbye to you guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for being there for me and um, your lovely comments and prayers. So it's a journey. I'll keep you all posted and um, I'll talk to you soon. Stay well, be kind, love you guys. Mwah. Take care, bye.